Fred wants to test out his new car. He thinks it's pretty fast. Francine agrees to a challenge to see whose car accelerates faster. And off they go. After four seconds, Francine's car is going 4.4 meters per second. Fred's car is going 25 meters per second. So whose car has greater acceleration? You can see probably from looking at it and make a reasonable guess, but let's do the numbers and find out how much greater the acceleration is. At zero seconds, both cars were moving zero meters per second. After four seconds, Fred's car was moving 25 meters per second, and Francine's was moving 4.4 meters per second. To find their acceleration, we need to use the equation for acceleration. First, let's define what acceleration is. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. The equation for acceleration is delta v over delta t. Remember that delta means change in, so we can also write this as final velocity, or v sub f, minus initial velocity, or v sub i, and delta t we can write as t sub f, or final time, minus t sub i, minus initial time. Written out, it's final velocity minus initial velocity over final time minus initial time. We measure acceleration in the units of meters per second squared. And this unit comes from the fact that we have a velocity, which is a meter per second, divided by time, so it's divided by second. And that can be rewritten as meters per second squared. So now let's use this equation to find the acceleration of Fred's car and Francine's car. For Fred, the final velocity was 25 meters per second. The initial velocity was 0 meters per second. The final time was 4 seconds, and the initial time was 0 seconds. This gives us 6.25 meters per second squared as his acceleration. Francine's acceleration, we can calculate using her final velocity, which is 4.4 meters per second, minus her initial velocity over her final time, minus her initial time. We get 4.4 meters per second divided by 4 seconds, or 1.1 meters per second squared. So, Fred had a greater acceleration than Francine because his acceleration was 6.25 meters per second squared and hers was 1.1 meter per second squared. Note that acceleration is a vector. It has a magnitude and direction. Let's talk about some specific examples of acceleration. Let's say an object is moving to the right and speeding up. Its motion diagram looks like this. If you plotted the, the motion on a velocity time graph shown here, we're moving to the right, which means the velocity is in the positive direction, and we're speeding up, which means our velocity is increasing. So our graph would look like this. Remember, acceleration is the slope of a velocity time graph. You can see that the acceleration in this case is positive. 
consider an object that is moving to the right and slowing down. Its motion diagram looks like this. And if we graphed it on a velocity time graph, it's moving to the right, so it's going to be in the positive velocity, and it's slowing down, so its velocity is decreasing. By looking at the slope of this line, we can see that in this case, acceleration is negative. So to determine whether acceleration is positive or negative, an easy way is to plot it on a velocity time graph. In this case, it may be intuitive that a, a object that is slowing down is a negative acceleration. But that's not always true. It is true when it's moving to the right. Now we have an object moving to the left and slowing down. Its motion diagram will look like this. If it's moving to the left, that means its velocity has to be negative, so it needs to be in the fourth quadrant, or the, below the x-axis. But it's slowing down. That means its velocity is moving closer to zero. So its velocity will look like this over time. This is an example of acceleration, acceleration that's positive even though the object is slowing down. So in this case, putting it on a graph helps you determine whether acceleration is positive or negative. An object is moving to the left and speeding up. So its motion diagram looks like this to the left, its velocity will be negative, and it is speeding up. That means its velocity is going further from zero, so its graph will look like this. The slope of this line is negative. That means that acceleration is negative. This is one of the cases that often gets people because they think if it's speeding up, it must have a positive acceleration, but because it's moving to the left, and speeding up, it actually has a negative acceleration. The last thing I want to show you is an acceleration time graph. This is a velocity time graph. We've looked at this in the last video. You can take this motion and put it onto an acceleration time graph, and it will look like this. We don't use them as much as velocity time graphs or position time graphs. But to translate between a velocity time graph and acceleration time graph, it's similar to what we did from position time graph to um, velocity time graph. You take the slope of the line on a velocity time graph, and that gives you the acceleration. So in this graph, you see that this velocity is constant, or this acceleration is constant. It's not changing. The slope is constant between zero and one second. So if you take the slope of this line, you'll get two meters per second divided by one second. It's two meters per second per second. And that is the acceleration for the first second on this acceleration time graph. For the second part of the graph, the slope is equal to zero. And on the acceleration time graph, the acceleration is equal to zero. Now, Note, this does not mean the velocity is zero. It just means it's traveling at a constant velocity. And if you look at the velocity time graph, you'll see the velocity is two meters per second from one second to three seconds. Acceleration is zero. We're traveling at a constant velocity. Finally, the slope for this last section from three to five seconds is going to be a negative one and that gives us a negative one slope on our acceleration time graph.